March was a busy month from start to finish. I'm barely able to squeeze this in at the last of March itself. So let's just get to the kicks and the flicks. Everything enjoyed this month. Air Max 97 GS Spruce colorway, exclusive only to GS. The Vapor Max Plus in the Michigan colorway, gotta love it, go blue always. The Air Max 1 Anniversary Obsidian, this is hands down my all time favorite Air Max ever. I think I've decided that, at least for right now. The Air Max 90 Infrared, we know it's a classic. The Air Max Structure in the Neo Teal colorway, so glad I picked this up before being done uh, at Foot Locker. And then the Air Max Plus in women's white and red an alternative to the supreme pair that dropped that i absolutely took an l on and then finally the air max 90 gold trail vibes or mountaineering this one certainly flew under the radar and then to just top it all off again i enjoyed the 97 in the spruce green colorway I really intended to wear more of the Air Maxes in my collection. When I'm looking right here, I have plenty that I never got to. Now that's in part due to the fact that I uh, got my ankle piece touched up. So that meant it was swollen, especially the shin area. I didn't really want anything rubbing against it at the moment. So now that it's healed, it's just trying to work in all of the different pairs that I would love to enjoy. So nonetheless, I'll get to more Air Maxes because again, I didn't wear every single pair that I wanted and me running out literally just to go do errands. I don't necessarily throw on pairs. I'll just be honest. I have slides, I have mules, I have working socks i'm more likely to throw those on than i am necessarily a sneaker and if i do throw a sneaker on i have jordan ma2s i have ultra boost right by the door i have the delta 2 so i keep very comfortable pairs by the door but that doesn't mean i'm still not making the effort in 2023 to enjoy more pairs and speaking of more pairs you see this pair right here listen the alignment the blessings in 2023 i am beyond humbled and grateful so under armor and curry brand they have uh they have just overwhelmed me with love and support and they sent over the brand new unreleased curry to flotro chef curry that drops officially on april 1st so i'm doing my best to get this video out to you just so you can get a look of the shoot in hand now if you think back to the past 2016 they actually were not a fan of him wearing the two in this lower profile they were really afraid of him suffering more ankle injuries if you remember like those early days he dealt with a lot of ankle issues and they weren't again just a fan of him wearing that not to mention the fact that it was predominantly all white he was roasted online i mean dragged for that shoot you gotta remember the bulkier aesthetic was not appreciated back in 2016 but fast forward today wardell is able to laugh at himself a little bit so we have the chef curry now it is a little bit tongue-in-cheek because again he was roasted so the shoe looks like it's been roasted at the toe box moving to the back of the shoe itself but it's also meant to uh mimic up of like a roasted marshmallow so it has flow technology all up and through meant to give you the bounce the return the responsiveness needed for that quick guard play that curry is known for he jets around he moves around every single screen like he never stops moving now for myself i don't have a chance to get on the court a whole lot just between life and creating and just again life i'm not necessarily on a court but please believe any and all pairs i actually want to enjoy them in the gym not necessarily for leg day but certainly if i am doing just some different agility work um, i can use them for lighter leg work incline walks and then a lot of upper body days and just flow movements literally in the gym itself so uh, i'll be sure to go ahead and just enjoy these but again this pair drops on april first and we know that curry just signed an extension with under armor so we can expect to see so much more from curry and the brand itself and it's really about equity and ownership that's what he signed his deal for also there's equity involved and i just really hope more athletes and individuals take note of that you know look to have ownership in what you put you know your heart and soul and everything that you're worth into because that's really where the money is so uh no joke there's a whole box here though of Under Armour stuff like as you guys can see I haven't even gotten to these pairs that's gonna have to be a separate video I'm working on it but I have samples that were sent over some a lot of them have already been released but nonetheless I'm gonna get to that let's get to the flicks and get out of here movies watched in March I do my best not to have spoilers in here but Creed 3 this is hands down at least for me right now it's the top movie of the year and that's saying a lot because i really love scream six but creed three delivers across the board for this to have been michael b jordan's cinematic debut uh, in terms of directing oh it was just magnificently done and the chemistry on screen with him and oh just the entire family dynamic it was beautiful it was amazing him working through the issues of childhood trauma 
finally opening up to his wife because he definitely doesn't do that with her a whole lot um, in earlier movies there's still something held back and I think that says a lot that they're married now and their daughter has aged but there's still elements that he hasn't really revealed of himself to her and in doing that of course it brings them closer together but it was just really beautiful to be able to see and listen you having to take on that childhood friend and counseling could have solved everything like with their insecurities and the problems they hadn't overcome yet again from childhood trauma but it's amazing like blow for blow and i will say this watching a boxing movie if you're the partner i don't care man woman your significant other fights I, I just feel for you because it's feel like you're taking all of the blows on when they are in the ring themselves but i adored this movie i intend to see it twice i'm going like a second time hopefully this weekend to see it again but creed 3 it, it's it's a 9 out of 10 for me that's just how great it was again this is just for me personally it's a 9 out of 10 for me for four i'm really hoping we see this dynamic with his daughter and her wanting to fight and i would imagine it would cause some issues between him and his wife and so we'll see what happens but across the board they the cast was amazing i loved it so creed 3 definitely gets a 9 out of 10 for me cocaine bears <laughs> um it's as wild as it sounds Please understand that. It's actually also based on a true story. I don't know if you know that, so you can look up like real history of that. Not that the bear went around like mauling people like it does in this movie, but it still ingested said substances and that's true. And that part wasn't a joke, but of course it's crazily exaggerated for the movie itself. Um, plus up to Ray Liotta, rest in peace to see him again. And he's just always funny. Like, I, I love any comedy that has to do with Ray because it's, again, I always think of him as a good fella. I always think of him as a good fella. So still to see him uh, do this role was very interesting. And it is funny. Like, I didn't know if I would laugh as much as I did, but there is certainly comedy in there. The movie doesn't take itself too seriously, which I appreciate. I think it is dependent on the type of theater you see this in, how into the movie they are themselves. But our theater was really good. <laughs> Me and my friend, we went. Theater was really great. So uh, this is like a seven out of 10. Again, if it's just a fun watch, then cool. Like not looking to get anything out of the movie itself. Um, there were some elements that I think probably could have been removed from the movie, but nonetheless, it's still delivered on being just a decent watch. I saw Children of the Corn, so it's a remake, and if you're not familiar with Children of the Corn, like the old, old movies, right, the kids literally take out all of the adults and it's based on like this cult-like religious following they have of the one that walks beyond the rows and yeah, it's literally like rows and rows of corn and there's always like one child that's a leader that speaks to the one that lives beyond the rows, yeah. Instead of it being Malachi, it's a girl this time and there's good intention behind the protagonist of wanting the town to not just totally give up on farming and the crops and just you know pretty much selling everything up the river right she has good intentions but it all goes left when these younger kids take over and then they ruin it because they show the thing that's beyond the corn itself just do me a favor in horror movies don't actually show me what's supposed to be like menacing and scary because once you do it actually just doesn't make it that menacing and scary the same thing happened with the ritual do you guys remember that i think it was like the netflix the netflix movie it just removes it it just doesn't make it that good anymore so just go ahead and like don't show me what it is um i mean i i it was way more gory than i thought it would be like i didn't think this movie would have as much gore with it just, I, I don't know why i didn't because they literally gut adults in the originals okay never mind scratch that super gory though uh i still give it like a six out of ten like it wasn't great it was just okay scream six bigger better more gore more kills this is the franchise baby there are new rules and they delivered on all of the rule they just they did it except for the plot armor round all of the people like who gets stabbed like 25 times and is still alive unless you're like michael myers I just didn't understand that part. I, I adore Chad. I didn't like Chad in the first movie. I adore Chad in this one. Okay, he's there for her. But it's, um, he gets stabbed that many times, right? But then his sister is like almost taken out with just like a stab to the arm, but then she survives the stab in the subway to her stomach. Like, guys, listen, the plot armor is thick. It is thick in here, okay? of what they're able to live through. It's not normal whatsoever. So that's my one gripe with this is that none of the people that 
you would really have an emotional attachment to, like passing away, they don't. I really liked Mindy's girlfriend, but like, the gore scenes were insane. They were really, really stellar. Opening, I really appreciate it. The family dynamic coming back into play again, uh, it's very Scream 2-ish. And I get it, but I don't know. Maybe, like a lot, of, a lot of critics, a lot of commentary channels for horror movies have said they wish they would have gone a different way. I agree. I really do. I agree. Because once you watch it a second time, you start to kind of pick up on things that just don't make sense anymore. And I appreciate Kirby being brought back. I really want to see Kirby in seven and I want more of Kirby on screen. Like we didn't get enough of her. I was such a fan of her in four. So really hoping that we can get more of Kirby back. A lot of people are still not a fan of Sam and I'm not really sure why, but I adore Sam in this movie. I love the new boyfriend that she has, the new cute boy across the hall. He was cute and I was a fan of him being in here and the fact that the way in which he approached this understanding her trauma and being very paranoid and not having a trust of people and saying don't trust anyone, don't even trust me. I respected that with him because I was just like man this chick cannot suffer another boyfriend like another Richie being the one that is doing all of this. We at least don't get that. So I guess I will likely add like spoilers ahead of the Scream 6 segment right here but nonetheless listen it is bigger it is gorier there's a lot of chase scenes that i appreciate uh gail is a badass even though she gets hit in the face again <laughs> she's still a badass but we don't lose gail so i'm guessing we're gonna lose gail in like seven we're gonna lose gail which means you better bring sydney back if we have to lose gail pay pay sydney whatever it is that she wants okay you pay the final girl what she wants and you get her back in this franchise but this just did it across the board for me. So this was another nine out of 10 for me. I'll see if a, if a movie, a horror movie actually top Scream 6. As of right now, it's just sitting pretty high. This is all I got. Um, I've been at this for a minute now. I hope this video wasn't insanely long. I have a lot more videos to get to and the Air Max One Big Bubble videos to get up for you guys. So whenever I get this up, hopefully it's before April 1st. I appreciate you tuning in. I'm doing my best to get back to shorter content because that was my intention for 2023. So my apologies, the videos have been a little longer, but if you spent any time, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Please be sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. And as always, act your age, not your shoe size. Peace.